Good morning. Today we are continuing our series on the vows from baptism. And um, today we're going to be focusing on presence. So our scripture is in Acts 5, starting in verse 12. So will you join me for scripture today? Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, for the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So our baptismal vow this week is the vow of presence. It also happens to be the first Sunday that we are doing in-person worship again in our sanctuary. Now, if you're watching this, you're probably not joining us for that, um, but I will be kind of reflecting on what it means to be in person and together. Um, and I want to invite you to come as soon as you feel safe to join us. We understand that um, for some of us, it it's not quite safe yet and we need to keep our distance, um, but we hope that you will join us in person soon. I want to let you know at the beginning as well that this sermon is a little different than my normal style. Rather than centering on scripture, I'm going to spend a lot of time just reflecting on the moment we are in. The scripture is pretty straightforward. The early Christians met together every chance they got. And Christians have been meeting together for over 2,000 years. But this year, when we had to protect each other and our community from COVID, we had to stop being physically present. This week, as we begin meeting in person again for the first time in months, I've been reflecting on what we learned about our vow of presence through this last year, when oftentimes we couldn't be present. First, I want to share that I learned how much we value being present, being together, and how much we understand being together as a foundational principle of our practice. Now, I must confess, like many pastors, I have complained in the past about people not showing up when I wanted, when I'd advertised an event or invited people diligently and no one came. And, you know, I've grumbled about how people should be more faithful when it comes to showing up. How hard is it, after all, to show up? So much of what I understood about myself as a pastor was about getting people to show up. It was really hard to flip that switch and ask people not to show up this last year. Telling people to stay home was not something the church trained me to do. Now, I share this because I know I am not the only one who has struggled with this in our church. Many of us felt that whiplash of asking people to come for our whole lives to asking people to stay home. It was really jarring. It was uncomfortable, and it took a lot of prayer. There was a lot of, God, are you sure this isn't, this isn't what we're used to? And we all live through that adage together. You don't know what you've got until it's gone. We really missed being present together each week. And it's hard to describe the longing because so much of what happens when we meet is mystical and spiritual and doesn't fit the language we have to describe it. We were not missing the sermon. We got that online. We were not missing the liturgy and the prayers. Those were coming through our all call system. We were not missing each other's voices because we could call each other up and talk. We weren't, we were not even missing our building because we could visit during open sanctuary hours. So what were we missing? We were missing the very presence of each other. 
and the thing that happens just by being together. On top of not having language to describe what happens when we're together, we have great language to describe the convenience of staying apart. We've got terms like sleeping in, pajamas, and when we say pajamas, we all know what that means. Comfort, right? So maybe, this is what I keep reflecting on, maybe the church needs to do a better job of finding the language for what happens when we are together. Maybe the church needs to do a better job of finding the language for what happens when we are together. Because it's something special, isn't it? There's something special that's hard to describe when we are in each other's presence. I'm going to try a little bit here, but I know that I don't have the perfect language for it. When we are together, the Holy Spirit in me connects to the Holy Spirit in you. And God says, you are not alone. You're not alone in your pain. You're not alone in your joy. That I carry your burdens and you carry mine. And together the load is made lighter. There seems to be a conversation between our spirits that unite us with each other and with God. The scripture says of the spirit that when we do not have words to pray, that the spirit speaks on our behalf. And that is what happens when we are present together, that the spirit in me speaks to the spirit in you and that we feel fully heard, that we feel God using us in each other's lives. So I guess what I want to say about presence is that maybe now is a good time to reflect on why we go to church. Maybe we need to build a better language around what we experience when we are together. Because really, we aren't going to church because that is what we have always done, or because it's the only way to get a sermon or music or liturgy. We come to church for something else, something more that happens when we are together. And maybe we need to find a better way to describe that experience. So I guess what I'm inviting you to do with me is to reflect on what the vow of presence means to you and how you live it out every week. I'm going to end with a story that um, is just one of those moments in my life that I always hold close when I think of how important presence is. So when I was in high school, my father started working a job that um, kept him from going to worship on Sunday morning. We had always gone as a family to worship, um, so this was kind of a new experience. And when that happened, my um, father just seemed grumpy all the time. It was hard to describe, but there was something that he just wasn't himself. And um, I had already felt called to ministry. I already valued church a lot. And so I talked to my dad about getting back into worship. So we actually looked up a United Methodist Church that wasn't too far away. And it was actually on the way to work. So we could catch the early service there and still he could still get to work on time. We went there one Sunday and I cannot tell you what the sermon was about. There was nothing really that spectacular about the music. I mean, it was good. It was fine. Um, but when my dad got home from work that day, he was a different man. And there's no way to describe that in the elements that were in that worship service. It was just that he had been there and that his spirit somehow was renewed through that experience. There's something mystical that happens in worship. And for me, that moment was that, that aha moment for me of saying worship itself is important. 
regardless of what happens in worship. The very act of us coming together and worshiping together is powerful and it changes us. It changes us to be more fruitful in the fruit of the spirit, it makes us more gentle and patient, kind and compassionate. It makes us into more faithful disciples. So I want to encourage you with that today. If, if you've been catching uh, my sermons and are in the um, Lawrenceburg, Greendale area, I want to invite you to join us for in-person worship as soon as you feel safe and able to do so. In the meantime, I'm still going to be recording here um, for a while um, till we kind of get back to um, a place where we really feel safe. I also want to encourage you to get your vaccine so you can get back to worship. Will you join me in prayer? God, we know that you are the God who meets us where we are, even if we're not in the church building. But God, we know that something powerful happens when we are present with other Christians seeking you. God, I pray that you would guide us and help us to understand the things that we do not have good language for. Help us to understand what happens mystically and spiritually in the midst of joining together with other Christians. And help us to communicate that better with the world. To communicate how powerful and important presence is in our faith journey. God, we lift up those who cannot yet be with us in person. We pray that you would continue to bless them and connect their spirit to other Christians and to connect to you. God, we pray that you would open their hearts, that you would create an environment where they feel safe, and that you would make a way that they would one day be able to join us in person so that they too can experience worshiping with other Christians. In the meantime, God, we pray for your blessings upon them, wherever they may be and whoever they may be. In your name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him.